forgot to turn the mic on. Alright, well, I'm gonna try to uh, just cut to the chase here. This is a story of a buck we call a drop time because uh, he has a drop time. I'm gonna try to keep it short because I know people have uh, short attention spans nowadays, so I'm just, I'm editing the video right now and I got the camera here and I'm just gonna try to like fill in the gaps, you know, kind of. So pretty much we were chasing this buck for three years. Um, 2020 is when he first showed up on our cameras. He had a split G2 or a, a kicker off of his G2. And he was a pretty nice buck. I mean, I, there's not a whole lot of bucks in the area. I mean, I don't know if it's the neighbors shooting them all or what. It just doesn't raise big bucks. So he, I mean, that was a pretty nice buck for around there in this area. <clears throat> so we never got a chance at him, so we didn't shoot him, obviously. But I don't think we would have passed him up. <clears throat> I don't think we found his sheds. I'm trying to remember. My brother found his left side shed, but I think it was the next year. It was in the following shed season, 2021. He found it when he was uh, logging for a neighbor. He found it over there, <laughs> cutting a tree down. <clears throat> and then later the same year, same shed season, I found his other side. Both year old sheds, they were pretty old. It was like half buried in the dirt. And so we were like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, we got both sheds to this buck, we know. Let's see if, uh, he's, if he's around next year. And then sure enough, uh, I think we got him in velvet. I don't have a lot of pictures of this buck. Trail camera pictures <clears throat> on my phone. I could get more from my brother, but I don't know, I'm just going to use what I have on my phone. So, But anyway, yeah, he showed back up next year, 2021, and uh, he had the drop time, hence the name drop time bug. That's a good picture. I like that picture. You see his drop time real good. I, I don't even know if that would legally be a drop time. Some people say that's just his, I would say that's a drop time for sure. One guy said it's just his beam. That's his beam going down and then but that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we were really trying to kill him this year that he had the drop time, because you know, that's pretty rare, right? Drop time. So we were really trying to kill him. He was all over the cameras, but it just didn't happen. Neighbor down the road actually missed him two times with a, I think he missed him once with a muzzleloader and once with a rifle. Not 100% on that, but I know I missed him twice. So yeah, he was lucky to survive that gun season. We hunted all over for his sheds. Like we literally grid searched so hard forever. Could not find his sheds. And then <clears throat> one day when we were pretty much, I mean, done shed hunting, I went out and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go look one more time. Walked in there and I literally, I wasn't even really looking. I was not, I was thinking about something else. I was just walking along and uh, lo and behold, I look up and under a cedar tree, his shed is laying there with the drop point, with the drop time. It was crazy. I was just ran up to it, screaming. I mean, I was so pumped. I was taking pictures of it and calling people and uh, started walking around a little bit more and then boom, 20 yards away, his other side. They weren't chewed at all. They were perfect. They were like still dark. They weren't bleached because they were in the woods. It was just perfect. And I was like, man, we have got to kill this buck now. Next summer comes around and here he is we got velvet pictures of him and we were stoked he looked more massive than ever and i actually saw him first time i went in there to hang a camera literally on my way in there was a waterway and i saw him coming down the waterway through the corn i didn't know if it was him for sure so i snuck down in the opposite waterway this kind of little pond down in there snuck down hid in the corn and waited for him to come out and sure enough it was him and i was just super stoked to see him He's in the corn eating. Oh, this is so cool. Man, I hope he doesn't see me. That's awesome. No way. Did I see me? lucky to get out of there without spooking it. That is wild. I was literally just going down in there to set a trail camera for that buck. Man, he's a beauty. That's crazy. And then, <clears throat> so I backed out and then went in later from a different way, hung a camera. Same night I got a picture of him, so that was pretty cool. 
we were able to pattern him pretty good actually and we just had tons of cameras in there we had like 15 cameras in there so if he was in there like we knew about it yeah i mean we we hunted super hard for him tried to do everything right and uh i got chances at him but i blew it so that's what this video is about it is a very sad story so let's get into it Good afternoon people, welcome to the hunt. It is Thursday. Crap, I never know what day it is. I should do this before I... I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Uh, I'm not really worried about the deer hearing me. This is insane. I think this is the strongest wind I've ever hunted in. as much as I can. It is uh, November 2nd, and it's, uh, man, it's a joke, honestly. It's, it's a complete joke. 72 degrees, man. <laughs> 72 degrees, and the sun's about to go down. And, and there's no deer. And I'm depressed. And uh, it's windy as heck. And uh, I'm just going to shut up now. So what's going on here is me and my brother Tommy are going out to hunt and <clears throat> walking down a fence line and we see him out across the field. We see him coming down in the CRP chasing a doe and he goes into this little island here. He goes into this little island here and uh, he's locked down with that doe in there. We watch and watch and they, they don't come out. They're in there. So we're like, man, well, we know where he's at. Let's just go try to stalk him. And here I had forgot my release for my bow. And I had the camera and Tommy had his bow. And I was like, well, I'll be the camera guy. Let's sneak up there and uh, maybe try to try to call some, get real close, try to call, maybe call him out. I didn't really think that would work, but I was like, you know, whatever, it's worth a shot. We literally spent like, I don't know, a couple hours sneaking up there and and we couldn't really see if they went up over the hill. On the other side of the little island of brush, we couldn't see if they went up over the hill. So we honestly, I was kind of doubtful that they were even still in there. So I was just working my way closer and closer and try, you know, use my binos trying to see if they're in there through the brush and couldn't see them. And I was just like, man, I don't even think they're in there anymore. And so we got literally right up next to it. I mean, like, I'm talking like, 10 yards and I'm looking and all of a sudden I see some brown hair and I'm like oh my goodness I freeze and I'm like Tommy they're in there they're right here and 
about the time I say that. I don't know, our wind was kind of swirling around, so I don't know if they heard me say that. I mean, it was whispering pretty quiet, but we were really close. But the wind was kind of swirling around, so I don't know, maybe they winded us. But at any rate, the doe took off. I hadn't seen the drop time buck. I didn't know where he was, but I saw the doe laying there. And she took off, and then I don't think he even ever saw us. He was just following the doe. So we ran out, and Tommy drew back, and as he's running away, he shot at him. It was kind of stupid. I don't know why he did it. Shot in the dark. I mean, he was never going to hit him, but. Hit him? But we felt pretty good about it because we know he didn't he didn't smell us. He didn't, I don't think he smelled us and didn't see us. He was just following that doe, so. And then sure enough, same night, we got more pictures of him all over the place. He was in the same area. So we were like, all right, we're good. So kept hunting for him. And uh, the next morning, we went hunting. It was a Sunday morning. I figured, you know, we had church on Sunday, so I couldn't hunt super late. So I was out there. We were hunting, me and Tommy. And it was getting close to time to leave. It was a really good morning. I felt really good about it. And it was getting about time to get down out of the tree and leave to go to church. And Tommy texts me on Snapchat, sends me a picture of the drop time buck. And he says, stay where you are. The drop time is 50 yards. And I had not even, my phone was on silent. You know, I didn't hear it, didn't feel it vibrate or nothing. And I did not see that text. So I was literally getting my stuff together. I was getting ready to get down. And look up and boom, he's standing right there. And so I'm scrambling around, trying not to move too fast. Grabbing my camera, trying to get on him. And I just, it was a, it was a ruckus. I think I'm gonna be sick. What the heck? Oh my word. I didn't have time to range find him. Oh man. No. I thought he was 40 yards. Oh, he was 30 yards. I have my pin set on 30, and I thought he was 40. I guessed he was at 40. What the heck, and I aimed high and missed him. What? The reason I stopped him is because I thought he was gonna, I was afraid, it was a pretty narrow shooting lane and I was afraid that he was going to walk, keep walking and then I'd never get a chance at him. So I stopped him and I'm, he looks and I'm just frozen. My bow is still on the hook. I'm like halfway reaching for it. <clears throat> Super stupid, but the reason I'm not ready is because the time that I should have been getting my bow and range finding him, I'm getting my camera turned on and it happens so fast. 
So by the time I get my camera on him, I have to stop him, and then I'm not ready. So, yeah, that's the situation here. That's a stare down for like eternity. Right, well, I just uh, screwed up again. Stupid crap. I'm so sick of this. I was literally using the crossbow. And the crossbow screwed me over. I had him at like, I don't know, 70, 60 yards, probably 50, 60 yards. And I had him come in, and it was brushy. And I had to put the crossbow off the safe. And it wouldn't go off. And I was literally freaking out. I was like, what is going on? And so then I was messing around. I was looking down, trying to literally about broke my thumbs, trying to push it, push it on say or on fire. And he he crashed. He, I heard the brush moving a little bit. And I thought he went back up in the thicker brush where he couldn't see me. So then I was moving around, kind of trying to get this, figure out what was going on with the crossbow. And uh, finally I realized the freaking arrow was out. Like that. I just need to push it back. Like, duh. I should have known. I wasn't thinking. So then I figured that out, looked back up, and he's gone. I thought he was up in the brush. And so I, I grunted a couple times, and here he was standing right there in front of me. I couldn't see, he was behind some trees. And he took off. He must have been watching me. And he took off. So, yep, that's, that's how my day went. How'd yours go? Wish me. 